Hey guys, welcome to What's Good, Kimberly, season four, uh, quarantine edition. <laughs> um, I'm so excited to be back with the show. I have the amazing actor, musician, model, you've got to be a model too, uh, <laughs> extraordinaire, my 20-something-year-old son, Austin Gage. Hi everyone, thank you so much for having me. Awesome. I'm so exciting to be on the show. I'm so excited to have you. And this is the first time I've ever done like interviews like this where I'm not like out at a like volunteering event. And I like it so far. Um, the way Austin and I know each other is that um, we were in a short film um, that was produced by Inner City Filmmakers called Frame of Mind, in which the frame of my elbow was made widely famous. Because that's. You were the star of the all show. All you saw of me in that film. <laughs> you know, that elbow told the story. We filmed for <laughs> so right long, there. and I used so much emotion. I was, oh, I hope I lotion. That would be so good. <laughs> Every, please don't write me and be like, get your ashy elbow out of the frame. <laughs> <laughs> oh no but like it was an amazing project um it was my first time acting on camera oh wow i didn't know that yeah yeah i got in late in the game how long have you been acting so i've been acting since i was six years old in theater you know so camera's so different than theater but um wow. yeah you seem like a natural on set and everything like you took directions well with my father <laughs> I know. And then you also talked to, I think it was the director's father. You were sitting with him on the couch, and you guys had, like, a really deep philosophical oh. conversation. That family that let us use their house, cool. salt to the earth. Like, the family, the people that America needs to be, like, made yes. by. They were so wonderful. And, I, and I, I, like, I'm not weird or anything, but, like, I get... I don't really get into energy, but like I, I feel you can feel energy. Feel it in the room, yeah. And in their house, it was a lot of peace. You know. Oh, I felt that. I didn't want to leave. I, I wanted love to be my that. family. <laughs> and I was like, went out to their neighbors, and I'm like, I, I don't normally scream at people like this. I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, you were on the porch when you had to leave him. You yeah. were leaving your husband in the short. So you were screaming, you slammed the door, you, you like he threw it back at you or something. Yeah, yeah. So the neighbor so, saw that. Yep. So for y'all that don't know, because our film, it was on wide release for like 10 minutes, but now you can no longer um, uh, view it. It was <laughs> not at the it Academy, was, though. That's true. It was so cool. They had the reception. Remember those brownies? Oh, like, yeah. Yes, I do. I remember so, the yeah. Oh, my God, yes. So the film that we did, it was produced by Inner City Filmmakers. And it was a short film, so um, not a lot of people saw it unless you're invited to see it. But, oh, sister, stop calling me. Quarantine. Um, <laughs> but basically what happened in the film was I was Austin with my son who was going to college. And I was leaving his father and was contentious. And we fought and screamed. And the place where we filmed it, the neighbors were like, why? Just why? <laughs> and then it was screened at the Academy of Motion Pictures and Art. Yeah. Which was mad cool. That was super cool. So for my first acting experience, that was actually pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> that's a sign. It's got to be that your first short film would be screened yeah. at the Academy. Yeah. That's where they used to have the first Academy thing. Awards back in the 20s and stuff. So that was like... Crazy amazing. Just crazy amazing. So, yeah. So you started in theater. theater. Yeah. So Whoa. I was in The Wizard of Oz. I was a munchkin. And exactly. I did exactly that. <laughs> um, I wasn't cool enough to have the lollipop to be like part of the lollipop guild. But I was Amen. there talking to the main cast. And it really came full circle because in sixth grade, I was the whiz and the whiz. Hey. Um, and then in high school, I was the lion in The Wizard of Oz. So uh, that's been a show that I've done consistently. Oh, my gosh. Are you serious? Call to it. Yeah, I've done The Wizard of Oz twice and The Wiz once. So that's a show that's always been on my heart. And it is my favorite movie, The Wizard of Oz. Really? Oh, that's so great. 
Yeah. That means something. I think it does. I think There's, everything means something, but yeah, I think it's sad. With all the characters, I learned something from each of them, you know, from Dorothy, Scarecrow, Ten Men, and Mine. And that play is deep. Yeah. That and, you know, you're deep. doing rehearsals for months, three, four, or five months. So you're reading the script, you're hearing what they're saying, you're seeing how it changes and, and how the actor changes him or herself in the role yeah. while you're in rehearsal mode. And then finally, when you put it up for an audience, it just all comes into fruition. Oh it's my just a stick piece. That's that so you're amazing. Working. Yeah, so I'm glad that I had the whiz when I was younger and that it manifested into more. I love going to the theater. I mean, I love seeing movies. I'm, I'm addicted to movies, but the theater is just another beast, man. Does that, does that make it easier for you to do things on film since you're like, oh, I got this, like being off book like so quickly? It definitely helps with the confidence. I would say like a huge difference is having that audience, you know, because that kind of motivates the humor or the intensity of the situation. Just yeah. kind of having another pair of eyes or a lot of people watching the thing. Um, mm. I think it is easier because when you're doing theater, so much of it's big and larger than life characters, but for the screen, you have to communicate something smaller and, wow. and more subtle. Yeah. Or else it does seem too much and, and people get confused or thrown off by it or it doesn't seem genuine. So it actually was a challenge because when I started going to acting classes in L.A., so many instructors and coaches said, okay, too much. Bring it down. Stop uh, being well, extra. Bring that yeah, down a little bit. <laughs> and finding out what your bad habits are. And they yeah. can be things such as your speech pattern or gestures uh, so many things that we do that we don't realize we do, mm -hmm. and that can affect the way people portray us in our work, you know? So, so true. yeah, yeah. It it's getting a hold of that yeah. and just trying to flush out some of those ideas and how other people perceive your performance. Mm -hmm. And I think it's all valuable. You know, if someone feels a certain way about it, I think there's value in all of that. Mm -hmm. There definitely is. There definitely is. So yeah. what, what, what made you have that like push of like, yeah, let's, let's move to LA. Let's do LA. Let's get LA. It's such a Hollywood. good push. Hollywood. You know, it's really amazing. And, um, I attribute everything to God, my faith. God has really provided for me in every way. And even today when I was cleaning out my car, I was like, I'm cleaning out my car in Hollywood. Like, how cool is that? I mean, you hit those moments. Yes. Yes. Yeah. It's just the fact that I'm living my life here and I never imagined it. And he just, he, he exceeds far it. exceeded my you, you pray for, he exceeds it. He exceeds it. He exceeds completely. it. Like, you can pray big, but the yeah. cool thing about God is that he encourages us to pray big. I think to just kind of get us in the mindset of, like, that's the biggest thing you prayed for. And look where you're standing. Yeah, I multiplied I, yeah. everything you gave me in a sacrifice of prayer, and I multiplied it, and right. now you're here. And it's just, you know, when I was, I was filming another short um, two weeks ago, and it was up north, like 80 miles north, and I was driving through the mountains. It was so oh scenic and beautiful. You were on and, location. Oh, yeah, God. and I was just really <laughs> vibing, meditating, praying, and God spoke in my heart, I didn't bring you this far to leave you. Amen. I just had Amen. chills down my spine because I felt so assured and I felt mm -hmm. comfortable in who I am, who God made me to be in my relationship mm -hmm. with him. And it is strengthening because I'm going outside my comfort zone and challenging myself and pushing myself and learning how to be more selfless. Yeah. You know, I, a goal is a huge goal of mine to worry less about myself and more about what God's plan is for my life and how he can right. use me as a vessel. But to answer your question, it was, it was that it was, I've always wanted to be in Hollywood. And I think when I listened to that voice inside, mm -hmm. it was telling me not to go to college. It was telling me to drop everything and move. And I went to college anyway, because other voices were telling me what was best for my life. Yeah. And that was wrong. And I've forgiven those other voices, you know, and I've, move forward but in moving forward it's knowing that i have to listen to that little voice because that's god it's god mm -hmm. telling me what's right for my life yeah. and i don't think it's anything that's vain or um 
you know, I think a lot of us think that we don't deserve a better life, that we should be punished, that we feel guilt and shame. And it's like, no, we're absolved of that. We're free of that. That's the, the importance of forgiveness that I think not a lot of people understand. Is some people are like, oh, I'm forgiven, great, I'm not going to hell. And it's like, no, 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 no. It, 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 uh, that has such little to do with it. Forgiveness is a everyday state of mind of accepting and giving. Because what you give to someone like else yeah. really depends on how much you accept the forgiveness that you have. Because I know when I'm feeling like down or I'm, I'm, I'm not really focusing on what Christ has done for me, the work that Jesus has already done, that I don't need to earn it. Yeah. And I can't, I couldn't earn it if I tried, but right. he's already done the work. And that affects how I, the energy that I put out to other people. And it affects what I accept because it's accepting love and not yes. just accepting love, but like excelling in your life. What I'm learning is excelling in your life is not just accepting love. It's accepting like, yeah, why not me? Mm -hmm. Why not me? God has great big things for me. Like, exactly. of course, I'm blessed and highly favored. It has to be me. It has to yeah. be me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because God loves me that that much. And that's the mm -hmm. thing. It doesn't have anything to do with us. <laughs> It does it is not right. everything, I won't say that. It has very little well, to do so with us. Yeah, God's it's love is so big. Yeah, yeah. That we can be used in ways we never expected and we can really empower and impact other people's lives. Cause I'll tell you what, people who I've had any influence over, who have written me letters or whatever, just over the smallest things of small acts of kindness, that's what matters most to me. That's how I measure my success in life is influencing, uplifting others. Everything else, I mean, yeah, it's great to have a short um, screen at the academy. Like, that's awesome, you know what I mean? Yeah, those are great. <laughs> yeah, but I think the it's way that you um, help other people in life, that's what gives me the most fulfillment. Yeah, yeah. Truly, truly. Uh, yeah. And what have you, what has been your regimen of education? Yeah, because I'm so, I, I, I'm late in the game. Like I started acting when I was 33. Uh -huh. Oh, that's 35. Yeah, like right but I'm that. I'm like just starting on my path. But like mm -hmm. being like starting in theater early. So you probably learn to sing early. You probably learn to play the piano early. Like what's been your training yeah, regimen? Well, it's it's funny first that you say that because you know I feel like I'm starting later in my career. You know, I have a roommate who's 18 who dropped out of college and moved here. I didn't start in Hollywood until I left college. So I was older. It was four years later. So I wish I had been doing, um, I don't even wish I'd been doing it. It's just a different journey, you know? Mm -hmm. And yeah, I think that's it's hard because you do compare yourself. You can't help but do that. Um, and you look at someone else's life. And even some people are like, wow, you know, you have gray hair or how old are you? They question me and they start guessing my age and they're like really off. They're like 35. Oh. Eight. I'm like, You're no. so off. You're so off. I'm so young. Yeah. No, I'm but his like, mother. He can't be it's 35. The, <laughs> but it's the way they see you. And some of that can get under your skin. But yeah. again, I think it's just letting that go because I do I go to? Because should I be in the teenage classes playing you know, high school or college, or should I be in the adult classes playing yeah. um, husbands, boyfriends, this and that kind of thing? That's a good point. Like, that's one of the, the things I was like, kind of training like, you. What age do you play? Like, hey. Gabrielle Union. Homegirl yes. was 28, I think, when she did bring it on. Oh my gosh. And she was in high school, right? High school senior. She was playing like a 15 year old. <laughs> <laughs> like, what? It is yeah. like, it's like I tell, like, oh, um, sometimes, like, older women will be like, oh, I can't wear that. And I'm like, you know what? No, you dress how you feel. Yes. Like, you don't dress what people tell you you are. And so sometimes people will be like, you look this age. And I'm like, where did you get that from? <laughs> but when you're acting, you have to go with it and go, you know what? How young can I play? Right. How old can I play? If they add some gray, can I push it? To play a forty-year-old, can I push it to play yeah. a forty-five-year-old? If should they I do play older, should I shave? Makeup? Should I wear should my I hair shave? Put down? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Should I, yeah. you know, should I get highlights? Should I leave, should I dye my hair yeah. any color? 
Um, should I get colored contacts so my eyes are brighter or darker? Yeah. All these things that are really out of our control. But your eyes don't need to be any brighter. <laughs> They're like the perfect green. Or blue. There's diamonds, no thing. Or, you know, I went to classes that were really bad for me where they just ripped me apart and I would be crying in front of a whole class and they basically just really dug into me and that didn't feel right. I don't right. like that. I don't like that. Didn't, yeah. yeah, it was, you know, they basically said, what's the worst thing to ever happen to you? And then they opened that up in front of the whole class I don't and there like was that. people <laughs> and it, it got me to a place where I was so broken. I just remember thinking, oh, I just want to survive this and I'll be okay. I just want to get out of here and I'll be okay. No. And you know what? That's an important point of like people who want to be actors, who want to move to LA and do it because it can be done. I mean, we're always watching the, the screen. We're watching the stage of people who packed up and now they're so-and-so or so-and-so. It can be done. But the most important thing that you just brought up that I think is important for new actors or people finding their way in Hollywood is if it doesn't feel right, do not be ashamed to say, you know what, Carol, this isn't working for me. I'm going to go. And I'm and, still and that's that a lesson. lesson. I'm still learning that because there's been times where you're on set or you're in hair and makeup or um, getting a costume and there's a weird something going on it's a an awkward situation you're very uncomfortable mm -hmm. and it's easy to just bite the bullet and not say anything but it's better and always best to say something and get out of that situation because the word what's so i think we have this fear of like what's the worst that can happen is like oh we we, we second guess ourselves because yeah. You know, I think everyone's been through a situation where they're like, oh, I should have got out of that. And, like, I did, like, I mean, I've been doing background for a couple of years, just which yeah. background's a good way to, like, get your foot in the door in terms of just learning what it's like to be on set yeah. and learning how to behave yourself, be respectful, how to listen. Um, exactly. And, like, I did a back background where it was, like, a biker bar and they wanted me to wear this like leather like <laughs> boobity boppity boo and I was like oh yeah you know what I'm not comfortable with that and so the worst that can happen like I because I'm like I'm this little person I'm background no room to be a diva like obviously but the lady the worst that can happen didn't happen to me she's like oh okay you don't want to show the side okay let me let me um let me stitch you up let me give you a shirt underneath and I was like, oh, that wasn't too bad. Like, I felt uncomfortable. I spoke my mind. I wasn't a diva because there's no room to be anything about that. But, but I was like, she listened. She received my energy that I was uncomfortable. And she made a change, and I was more comfortable. But I was afraid, like, oh, they're going to think I'm this. They're going to kick me off and da 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 But it's like, even if that does happen, your, your, your emotional health comes first. And that's tough to, like, speak up for. Absolutely. Yeah. You have to vouch for yourself and be your best friend. I mean, it can be a lonely city and um, I just encourage and empower people to speak their truth. If something makes you uncomfortable, voice it, you know, because if you're silent about it, it could be a worse situation or it could end up being something that's scarring that you have to yeah. take years to work through to heal. Um, I know for me, I did central casting as well. I did background mm -hmm. uh, for about two years, mm -hmm. and it's great. So if you are moving to the city, I think yeah. if you want to know what it's like to be on set and mm -hmm. the long days, crap, we did a show together. We did. Oh, my God. I just forgot about that. Yeah. What was oh that? Oh, my God. It was oh. um, The Politician. Well, I think we were on two shows together. On Netflix. Because we, we were outside the tent. Yeah, the politician. Was, oh, that was Netflix. the politician. Okay, yeah. Yeah, Yeah, and oh. I looked over, and I'm like, there's like this crowd of people gathered around this beautiful man. And I'm like, who are they talking Who's to? Doing? And I was like, child, is that all? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was like, yeah. oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, it was awesome to see you there because we had done the yeah. short. That. Yeah, but it, it's a great experience because it is. You, you realize what goes into it these long yeah. days, 
Um, you could be inside or outside during winter or summer. Yep. So yep. It's just, having to have the same energy in the first take as you do six hours later, mm-hmm. being like, ah, and it's like, I'm so tired and I'm cold, yeah, I'm but, so but that's part of it. I think, I think, and, and a lot of actors start in background and I think it's important also to, in, in background, I've learned to like, I watched the actors, like this one project, like Octavia Spencer was on it. And, and, you know, people are talking in between and I'm like, let me shut up and let me look at her. And I want to know what is she doing in between takes? Mm-hmm. Oh, mm-hmm. Look at, she's quiet. She's voicing her opinion when she feels like her character should do something different. And I just shut my mouth and open my ears and my eyes. Yeah. It's a great place to learn like that. And I think it's being open in every way to listen to, what the instructors are saying to read as much as you can, as much material about acting, about the craft, to watch and research, just become a sponge because that will just um, enrich your whole performance of the character and it will add dimension and you'll find more of yourself in that too. Yeah. What, what, what out of all the things that you have tried, what's helped you the most? Is it act, act drama, scene study, improv? Like, what's been the most influential in your process? I think, oh, that's a hard question. So, um, I'm a Groundling student, and I love improv. I just took my first class, like, two weeks ago. Yes, but, but I haven't, like, signed it. up for school, but I just took my first um, class. Oh, I think you're going to love it. Yeah, because you have amazing energy and you're bubbly and it's just, it's so character driven. It's so fun. Oh. But you really, you know, before you go up to do any piece, you just get those nerves of what am I going to say? What's going to happen? Um, and then you just tell the story with your scene partner. And then to add on to that, it's just scene study too at Margie Haber Studios. I think just working on the material with the other actor is huge. Mm, and okay. the last show that I filmed a few weeks ago, it was, um, I think we had a little bit of disconnect and hopefully we got connected. She was my wife. Uh, we were newlyweds and then we went to the cabin um, for an adventure. It was a three day shoot and we learned more about each other in between takes, but I kind of mm-hmm. wish we had spent more time before we were on set because we had to work out the chemistry to find what we love about each other to make yeah. the relationship work. So with so much of your partner, your scene partner, giving and taking, being open, and then I think the improv is just fun because it keeps you on your toes, and you never you know what they're going to be quick. Yes, you have yeah. to be quick. Yeah, yeah. it's so and much. It's so much fun, and it, and it, and it te- improv teaches you how to like how so much of acting is giving. I think not in a bad way, but like young actors come to Hollywood and they're like, I want to do this and if I get a chance to do this monologue and if I, once the camera's on me, I'm going to do this and I'm going to, and improv is very much like, Hey, you're shining right now. What can I give you? What can I give you? And it teaches you the humility aspect of acting and how much of acting is giving to someone else. Yeah, absolutely. I love I love it that. really is giving and it's doing the work. Um, you can't escape the work. And I think, mm-hmm that the A-listers know that and they've done the most work and now they're reaping the reward, but behind the scenes in between takes, they're doing even more work because they're trying to outdo themselves. They're trying to push themselves. So I think it's just challenging yourself enough where you're constantly learning and growing because that will make you the best actor you can be. And that's the thing. It's the best actor you can be, not that someone else is or the person with you in the waiting room um, going into audition for the same commercial, you can't worry about that and you can't control the other actors or that it's a competition because the only person you're competing with is yourself. Yep, that's right. And your faith has to really come into play and you've got to hold on to that word. Like that word you got when you were going to the mountains, I haven't brought you this far. Sure. You know, what yeah. was it? Uh, I haven't brought you this far to leave you. Yes. Like when you're in the audition room, you've got to pull, you have to keep those jewels close to your heart and pull them out because the enemy will try to be like, yeah, I don't know. I mean, he's like five inches taller than you or like, right. look at her, I'm like her waist is snatched this, yeah. this, this role calls for her to be fit and you know you're struggling. Like, 
And it's like, honestly, sometimes what casting directors are looking for is so surprising. And you're like, like, because I'm grateful for the opportunity to like try because I'm still at the student film stage. Like I'm, I'm learning and I'll yeah. do auditions and I'll be so shocked to get a call back. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best feeling. And I'm like, really? They're like, you got it. I'm like, why? What? Why? Somebody Please tell me because I'm trying to, but like that, that happens. It's like you you almost surprise yourself. You but do. then you're again, and you have to pull out those jewels of like, well, why not me? God yeah. has my back. I walk yeah. in the favor of God. God's blessed me. Yeah. And even the auditions are just, Lessons. They're yeah. teaching lessons. Wow, what would be your dream role? My dream role. <laughs> you know, I think to be a black superhero would mean that I made it. You know what I mean? Because it's yeah. like Brie Larson. Like a lot of people who have won Oscars, yeah. they're usually a hero. Yes, that's true. That's so, true. I kind of want to go in that order. Right? <laughs> right. It would be I'm great. I'm telling you, Black Panther too. like, <laughs> hey, I don't know if they've already, but I mean, I'm, I don't uh, know. <laughs> right here. Yeah. I, I will shave my stuff. head bald, okay, to be in Black Panther. I will be one of the Dora Melange. I will take my stare and I will shave my head. A yeah. Bombay, like... Let's do it. Just, I'm here for it. Just to travel the world, to be at a cool location, and then yes. have all these green screens, and have to imagine what that world is. I just, and then having being tied up to fly to these systems where you're flying around, yes, and that have stunts so. and stunt doubles. Oh, that's <laughs> amazing. Yeah, I love that. I love that. I, and I don't think um, comic book movies will go away anytime soon. Like, I, I was amazed at what Marvel did. Just it's amazing. Change the world. Change the world. Change the world. But we can be part of that too, right? <laughs> so I want to ask you, um, in terms of, I mean, there's so many different genres. When you talk about acting, there's so many different things, and that's what you want to do is have range. Um, but in terms of comedy, comedy is one of my favorite things. What are some of your favorites? comedic films and TV shows and actors and what's your relationship with comedy? Oh, I love comedy. It's just such a relief to laugh, especially in times like these and times of a crisis. Um, I would say the classics, you know, Robin Williams, I've always looked up to and Jim Carrey as well. Um, these are popular people, popular icons yeah. for comedy, but Mrs. Doubtfire you know, uh, The good. Mask, just yes. crazy character work with physicalization and yes. faces, yeah. Um, right now, I would say something that's like lighter, Young and Hungry with Emily Osment, it's it's kind of like a little silly, but it's just light, it's about 22 minutes, easy to watch, and the characters are just so fun, you know, they just all have quick-witted comments to make. So oh, I like the wit, but I also like the physical comedy, and I've just been watching um, a lot of sitcoms recently, just trying to see what that looks like. Family Matters, you know, that 70s show, just everything to, to broaden my horizons. Yeah, and just, like, lift you up. No, yeah. We don't need that right now. Like, we need to really laugh. I love when people discover, um, like, gems. Like, I'm, I'm really quite upset with Netflix right now for taking Frasier off of Netflix. Although it was on there for years, but now you can see it on Hulu. Um, okay, because I wanted to watch that still. It's on Hulu. Hulu. Okay, I'll watch it Hulu. 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 But Frasier is such an amazing comedy. Because yeah. Because a lot of the actors on it were Broadway actors. And so I and I feel like the way the show is produced, it's more like a stage comedy than a sitcom. Mm -hmm. And I think okay. that's what makes it special. Kelsey Grammer played Frasier for 20 years on three different shows. Whoa. Well, that's never been done. On Friends, he got an Emmy for playing Frasier on an episode of Wings, um, which was, like, back in the 90s. Like, 
Right. That was probably before you were born. <laughs> and, um, and of course, Frasier. And so I've never seen that before of like a character being on three totally different shows. That's Same amazing. Character. Yeah. You have to watch Frasier. Oh my God. It's I, will. I will. I will. And I want to ask you also um, what, what is, it's hard to say, like, who's your favorite actor? Because there's so many for so many reasons. Like you mentioned Jim Carrey. Like he can do comedy, but also he can really bring you to drama. Like there's so many. So instead, I'll ask you, what actor inspires you and for what reason specifically? Because there's, there's like 20 different actors that inspire me. But. Say, um, Robin Williams, just because I watch his work all the time. Yeah. Good Will Team, Mrs. Doubtfire, Flubber. And what he's done is created the sense of drama inside of comedy. I mean, there's so much heartache in his comedy. Yes. And like, and it's the feeling, it's the emotion that he puts into it that makes these, uh, that makes these classics alive today, you know? And I, I want to say someone else, you know, someone that's not so popular, but really for him, he's changed my life. I grew up watching his work and I always knew I want to be like that. I want to have all these movies coming out and I want to be the lead in the movies. And so for me, it's just, he's told some of the greatest stories that I could ever imagine. I love that you said that because he was in the first film that I ever saw that made me absolutely fall in love with film. And that was Awakenings with Robert De Niro. Um, those where my parents were watching it and I was hiding on the side of the couch and they thought I was asleep. Cause it's, it's, <laughs> it's a, <laughs> I used to do it all the time. My parents would be watching Homicide Life on the Street with Andre Bauer and Melissa Leo, these amazing actors, and they hear something, and they're like, girl! <laughs> and I was, like, watching Homicide. I'm like, did they catch him? Um, but, but Awakenings is this movie with Robert De Niro where he's uh, mentally disabled. Have you seen it? Yes, I have seen it, yes. I That's will. the first movie that I cried, that I... I don't mean tear. I mean, I boo-hoo cried. Yeah. At, but I, I, I was so, I had to be seven or eight. And mm -hmm. I remember thinking, I know him, Robin Williams, from making me laugh. Um, like, as a kid, I had this thought. And then I was like, he just made me cry. And I was yeah. fascinated with the idea that somebody through emotion, through the way they say words, through the basics of acting, could make me feel something yeah. so Deep. Yes. Oh, yeah, absolutely. That's exactly how I feel. I that it's just, I can't even explain it um, because it moved my heart. Like, it moved me on the inside. Mm -hmm. That it compelled me to want to do this. Yeah. Even more. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. Well, lastly, I want to ask you, um, what is one positive thing that you hope we all, as the world community, um, receive out of this pandemic? Compassion. Compassion. There is so much, there was so much division before this, and what I've been amazed to see is how people have come together as a community. People have helped each other out. I mean, we really are all in this together. It's a global thing, and every single person is um, affected by it in some way. Small, large, whatever it may be. And I am just so grateful for this moment, for the suffering, because I've just, I've gotten to reset and recharge and reevaluate where I am and where I want to go. Yeah. I think it's gratitude. I mean, mm -hmm. it's all about how open we are as a society to these things, because bad things will happen and they do happen. But it's all about how you choose to see the bad things mm -hmm. and how you can make it into something good. So I really hope it's compassion, it's unity, it's gratitude and expression that we make beautiful art. We tell amazing stories from this and yeah. something beautiful comes out of ashes. Yeah, I love that. Oh, I love that. Oh, ladies and gentlemen. Awesome game. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. Coming to a theater near you. <laughs> to a stage near you. Well, sorry, in a Kevin. cape. Yeah. I'm speaking it over you. Oh, thank you. I appreciate DC that. Marvel. We'll take, for it. You. We'll take it. <laughs> thank you so much for thank your you. time, for your love, for sharing your light. 
You guys keep tabs on him. Austin Gage is amazing. He's a light. It's great to know that there's people like him in Hollywood. People like him headed to the big city. Specifically, I, I like to say I gave you your smile. Oh, you did. Yeah, we have those white teeth. White teeth. Um, That's good. Son relationship. Well, thank you, Austin, and um, enjoy the the rest of this time that we have. Yeah. Oh, I will. I'll watch Frasier. Yes! Yeah. Everyone watch Frasier. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much. <laughs>